Hi guys, well today we're going to have a look at how we get this neon light effect around a model and showing the reflection in the background, on the face and so on. And it's quite a straightforward exercise really. We're going to start with this photo here, just that one, on a background like this and we'll end up with an image like this. So let's get right with it, shall we? So the first thing we need to do is load our image. Now there's our image, fairly straightforward. I've loaded that in and you can see by the corners that it's locked and we want to keep it that way because you don't want to inadvertently um, modify the original. So let's just duplicate that right from the word go. There we go. Now we can turn the original off and we're working only with that one. Now the next step is to resize that document because we want a white border on three sides of that. So we go up to document and resize the canvas, not the document, resize the canvas. Now you can see here we've got pixels. That's the size of the image at the moment. But what I want is 3380, 3380. Now I've already work this out, you see. We don't want the chain on because this is going to be a slightly different size. 3380 to 3263. We probably could leave the chain on, but I don't want the borders equal all the way around it. Resize. And there we go. Now, if I've got the image there, I can just drag that down. And you can see I've got quite a wide border around the outside, a narrower border at the top and a, quite a wide border on that side. Now that's what we want. Now let's just save that. I like to continually save my work. Save as, and I'm going to put it in Dropbox Affinity Photo. There we go. Sorry about that little hiccup, but I do get lost on this thing sometimes. And I don't want to save it as image. I'll just type as neon image sample. There we go. That should do it. Well, I can always rename that later. But that gets it on its own in the, in the um, Affinity Photo work area. You can see nothing's changed there. So nothing changes, but what we want to do is put a background behind this. I mean a proper background. So we're going to find the rectangle, which is just there. We want a rectangle element. And I would suggest that instead of that, we use the eyedropper and take that from about there, I'd say, because it's There, now that's that colour there, just near the eyedropper, and that's that one there. So what we want to do now is put our background, and you can see that's that's a similar grey, a bit lighter in places, a bit darker, and it covers the whole thing, which of course is not really what we want. We're going to actually put it down there behind it. Now you can see that's left a grey board around it, but it looks very similar to that, but not quite. So there we have a problem. Now how do we solve this? Let me show you. Now that we've got our grey layer, which is that one there, we want to put a linear gradient on that from top to bottom. So let's use that. There it is there with that one. The solid we don't want, we want a linear gradient. And you can see it's from side to side there. So we'll just drag that up to the top, right to the center. And we'll drag that one to the bottom, right down there. Now it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom, but I want to make it quite a bit darker yet. So I'll emphasize that. Okay, now, 
You can make that any colour you like actually. Let's just go back to where we were. Move that across there into that. Now that's a good deal darker all over. You could make it that slight purpley colour and that might just suit what we're going to do. However, that's not quite how I want it. Let's drag that up there. So we've just got a bit of light at the top. That's why that border's there. Okay, now we'll close that and I'll leave that purpley colour there and we'll go back to there. Now the interesting thing is we've got a double shuffle going on here so let's put the girl back and we'll go to the selection brush which is that one there up in the top left hand corner you can see that and get the, get the text to appear is that going to appear? put that there go to the selection brush tool that's what we want now we're going to just select the girl What's the brush size? 72 dpi? That's not too bad. Oh. Select, deselect. There we go. Now I've got the selection brush tool selected. We'll select the girl. Go around there. Take in the hair, or as much of it as we can. I don't want to spend half the afternoon on this because you'll get bored sitting around watching me doing this. But I'm going right around the girl. I want her completely selected. And you'll see a bit of magic happen once I've done this. There she is. Let's get that right up there. Now we've got to get all these bits in the middle out. We don't want gaps in our image because that'll look really terrible if we have little gaps in the image because that's what will happen. Now there we go. She's nicely selected. There's a little bit of hair there that we need to... So go up here and put on the... That's not the add one. That should be... That should show up. It's a bit slow to show up. Okay, let's delete this one add and subtract so we'll just go actually that's 20 pixel width that's not bad now i've got to put add that back in add because i want that hair there there we go mm. Okay, so there's a few gaps there. That's all right. We've got that one filled up. You can take as long as you like or as short as you like with this. Now, here's the bit we need to be careful with. When you click on Refine, you can see that's not too bad and you can... You can bring a bit of the hair back in there. So it's not quite so gappy. There we go. Now, the selection, the output, not to selection, but to new layer with mask. That's important, that one. You can see right down the bottom right-hand corner there. Maybe I can move that. I can. Let's move that up to there. Selection, new layer with mask. So that when we select this, we'll get that, plus a mask which will appear over here. Now we'll apply that, just takes a moment to think about it. Now there's the new layer with mask. There's the background that we created there, the rectangle. You'll notice it turns off the original background. See that? It's turned it off. So you've got the selection with mask and it's masked, masked the, it <laughs> to that layer there. Now that's what we want. And it's a nice purple colour, which suits our fluorescence rather than black. <clears throat> Just save as we go. Neon image sample. And there we go. So let's pause it there.
while I just select that and we've got that one there. Okay. Now the next part we look at is drawing the actual um, fluorescent tubes. So we start by selecting the pen tool over on the left there and we've got to make it a certain width so we'll select that and I would suggest from experience that 30 points is the best option there. Now that is actually not white. We want that stroke to be white. So rather than black, we take it right up the other end, 255, 255, 255, pure white. Now we've got to draw our tubes. We're going to draw a triangle here that goes across the girl out to about there. So that's about there. Take it across there, out the other side to a line just behind her, and there's that there. Then we go down there, across to about there, I'd say, and up to there. Now, there's our line, and that's the beginning of our tube. Now then, we have our um, triangle layer, and we want to make sure that layer is selected. Now we go down to the bottom panel there and choose Layer FX. See Layer FX? There we go. And we've got that up there. Let's move that up to there a little bit. Now we want to change the way we look at our neon tube there. We want to tick Color Overlay for a start. Color Overlay. So we check that one on. Now it's black and we don't want black. Set the color overlay and select a vibrant color such as 255, 255, 4 and 151. 151. There we go. Now that's a, a purpley a very purpley colour, you might say, but that's okay. Now, set an inner glow next. So you can change that, blend mode normal. We just want to leave that as it is at the moment. We don't want to change that. You can experiment with that, of course. I'm not suggesting for a moment that you can't. But we want inner glow. Now, there's the inner glow and set the colour to white, which of course is 255, 255, 255. Set the source to the centre. Now, where's our source? Blending mode, colour opacity, sliders, noise, fill opacity, scale with object, There we go. Source to centre. I had it on the wrong one. Hopeless. Set the source to centre and the radius to 0 0.5. Now there's your radius and it's probably quicker to go 0 0.5. So we've got the radius set. This is all done previously by experimentation, really. And the blend mode to normal. The blend mode's currently screen. We want normal. The intensity to 85%. 85%. And the opacity to 59%. So it's not quite as opaque as you would think. Next, select the FX Outer Glow. That one there. Select the FX Outer Glow and set the colour again to 255, 4 and 151, the same as the Inner Glow was. Layer Effects Inner Glow. 
We're on outer glow. There we go. Now 255, we've got to set the color. 255, 4, and 151. Now, nothing much has changed at the moment, has it? Set the blend mode to add. You can set that to linear light if you like and set the radius to 60 pixels, the radius to Sixty. Now you can see we've got an an outer glow around that light. Opacity one hundred. Radius two fifty. Oh, hang on. We've got to go back a step. I'm getting ahead of myself. Intensity at twenty six percent. Opacity. Set that to 60%. So it's not quite out there yet. Now, we want to set an outer shadow. Is that one there? Set the blend mode to add. Again. Set the opacity to 100%. Set the radius to 250, which you can't do by the slider, but you can put that in there. The offset is zero, offset zero. Intensity 50%. We can use a slider for that one because it's not terribly sensitive. And again, the color is 2554151. Now you've got an off now you've got that glow appearing out there outside the tube. Now, set the intensity to 95%. Whoa, isn't that something? And reduce the radi reduce the opacity, sorry, to 30%. That's better. You could probably bring it up just a little bit. There we go. So that's the, the glow effect of the... Um, that's the glow effect of the neon tubes appearing. Okay, now we'll close that. And we've got this layer sitting here. Now we want to drag that layer below the girl. There we go. Now that's behind her, isn't it? But what we want to do is get that tube there so it appears in front of the girl. So it's like a 3D effect. That'll be behind and that'll be in front. Now, how do we do that? So select the mask only. That's that one. Let me show you that. There we go. You can see the mask only there. You can put it up there and just select it or you can bring it down here and select it. So you can clearly see what you've got. Now... Just reading my notes here, select the mask only, not the group, and set the brush to black. Now you want a brush here, not a selection brush, paintbrush tool, and you want that to be black. So RGB. Zero, zero, zero. There we go. 
close that. Now you can see I've got the brush set to 320 pixels, which is quite a big circle. Now when you bring that over here, anything that you paint on the mask with black will show what's behind it. You can see that. I haven't painted yet, but you've got to be careful here because the 320 is about the width of that area there. So what we want to do is bring that up there. The flow and hardness are probably too much there. Because I want to feather the edge. So let me step back there. Take the flow down to 80%. Leave the opacity and set the hardness to 79% there. Um, let me make that 390 a slightly larger brush. You can see that's painting it in a bit slower this time because I haven't got the brush set to such a hard There we go, that's a bit better. Now I need to feather those edges a little bit but that'll do for the time being. You can experiment with that as you like. Now what we want to do is select the image of the girl. That's that one there, not the, uh, not the mask but the image. Give the image a relative glow by adding a HSL shift adjustment to it. Live filters, layer effects, and you can see adjustments. I'm down the bottom right hand corner there. We want a HSL adjustment to this. Set the blend mode to color dodge. and set the colors to seventy seven thirty percent and fifteen percent now what's that done you can see that the fluorescent light is now reflecting on the skin of the girl in the image which is just what we want. Okay, now we can turn that off. I can go back to there so I don't inadvertently do anything. Now there's our image. At the moment, we can add some more things to that, but right for this very moment, I'll leave that sit there. And that was step by step, getting a 3D effect neon tube around the top of the model and adding a slight color glow to her skin and you can see why now why I left that background with a slight purplish haze to it because that's sort of the color of the neon tube. Okay let's leave that there for the moment. Lastly we will add a few effects but you can do this at your leisure. I've set a brush here, a luminance brush, to the x-ray and set it to around 190 pixels which is fairly wide and set the color to the same as that you can see the color up there and I've just added a bit of a splash of color right there just paste that in a bit so it looks to all intents and purposes the effect of the tube passing behind the girl's head creates a halo effect around the, the shape of her. And you can probably do the same along there. Now I'd like to put in 
um, a speckled background there. Put some splashes of colour around that. We'll need the layer there. Let's go back to the correct layer. Now we've got that background layer we're sitting on there. The flow of 3%. Let's increase the flow up to there. The opacity probably doesn't need to be anywhere near 100%. The width of 190. The hardness, yeah, well that's set in the brush. But you can put splashes of colour across there like that. To give it some depth. Now let's go back to the brushes and set a speckle there. Take the hard edges off that. Set the brush to very large, it's a thousand pixels, and you can see now the speckles as they appear on there. So adding adding effects to that is really up to you. Um, to whatever your particular um, wants will be. So let's not continue any further with this. You've got the basic outline there. Let's just save that so that it doesn't go away on me inadvertently. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I won't, um, won't labour through this anymore. Layers, there we go. So you've ended up with a couple of layers. I did put an extra layer on there. I forgot to mention that, so that you can put those colours in there. We went back and pasted those colours there. There's our rectangle, and I brushed some colours on there. That's an extra layer there with the colours behind the girl's, or the halo, if you like, through the girl's hair. That background there layer is still off. Turn it on now, and you can't see anything because everything else is in front of it. Okay, let's call it a stop there, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this. And I hope you get a lot of fun out of it, because it really is fun. Thanks for watching. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.